What's up and good evening guys. Welcome back to another video. This is just the start of the video to show you what we need to improve on. This is the first time using this tractor at night and I gotta say, these lights suck. But I can absolutely not see where I am going right now. It actually looks better on camera than it does in person. I could maybe, maybe see eight feet in front of the tractor. There, let me turn off the inside light. Like it lights up more to the sides, but there's just absolutely no light in front of me projecting to see what's going on. You can see James driving by right there, actually going over to help him move some steel plates with the old coyote. But uh, yeah, this is kind of sketchy. We're gonna have to change this. This tractor's going to the shop in the morning. We gotta, we gotta deck this thing out in some lights. These ain't gonna cut it. The rear ones ain't horrible, but they, they ain't great. I don't know how farmers back in the day did it. Oh, you know what, why aren't these on? Where the heck do I turn these on? All we got is those. Maybe I'm missing something, but that's not projecting much light. And again, the phone's brightening it, brightening it up more than it is in person. And we got lights down here. Oh, hey, look at that. That's a little bit better. Look at that. That's a lot bit better. James has this behemoth on the back of his truck. Ah, uh, thing weighs 80,000 pounds. I think we're moving steel plates to be able to put the jacks down on this thing so it doesn't just like bury itself in the ground. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing. I can assure you guys this is not gonna be much of a night video. However, we just had the perfect opportunity. James called me, he's bringing this big old girl down into the valley and I needed that steel plate moved. This thing picked it up just fine. I don't know what that steel plate weighs, but uh, probably not as much as a Hyundai. <laughs> I don't know how he does this. It is so dark out here and he normally does this on his own. The man knows his trucks. There's like two inches of clearance over there. Oh, listen to how pissed off those airbags get when he goes over that little dip. This is the stuff that blows me away. And granted, I'm not a trucker. I'm not a professional truck driver. I don't do this for a living, but like these guys that do this, uh, like they don't have very many lights. There's obviously no reverse lights on the trailer and they back these things up into some wild spots. James has a couple of lights up top right there, but when this thing is directly in front of the trailer going like straight with it, those lights really aren't lighting up anything behind the trailer. It is impressive. Look at that. Just thread the needle right there. Ooh, it's gonna get close. Impressive, senor, impressive. On time, on time I've been doing this. <laughs> All right, y'all, it is daytime. We are ready to go. We're gonna load up the new Coyote onto my deck over trailer. I haven't used this trailer in a very long time. It's just been kind of sitting out in the field over there. Uh, I was hoping I wasn't gonna have to take off the brush cutter because not very fun to hook up by yourself but this trailer only has a 24 foot deck and four of that is the dovetail which you can store stuff on but if you have to put the ramps up it kind of gets in the way like you need to pull all the way forward put the ramps up then back off and then you can kind of get your weight where you want it um, speaking of weight i have no idea which way i should load this thing i was thinking about backing it on because the axles are so far back i mean they start right there on the deck uh, and obviously you want most of your weight on the axles. We know the rear end of this thing is very light and most of the weight is in the front. But I've been watching a lot of videos and a lot of guys do load these things forward, so. I'm not really sure. I've always gone with my gut instinct and it has always worked. Is she big? Is she gonna be tall? I mean, we're gonna add another almost three feet. But first, we gotta pull off a brush cutter because we could probably make it work and hang off that way if we backed it on, but it's just not worth the struggle. I've never done this on my own. God, we can't even get the pin out. That's a bad start. All right, we got. All right, there we go. I will say, having this lever in the back just made this really, really easy. Actually, to get all this apart, uh, we'll keep these rings here so we don't lose them. Now, I know it doesn't look like it, but I actually do take safety seriously. You know, sometime, particularly when we're going to be out on the road and on the highway and stuff like that. I do take that stuff super seriously because, you know, it's not only your life in your hands, but it's everybody around you. Hopefully this goes well. Again, I think we're going to load it. I'll probably put the ramps up, maybe back the tractor up just a little bit. Um, obviously, we want enough tongue weight, but we want to, you know, but we got to have the weight above the axle. So it's going to take a little finagling. We've got some pretty wild roads leading here, and it's a really good test before you get out onto the highway if you got the setup right or not. This thing isn't super, super heavy. It doesn't weigh much more than the Mini X, I believe, uh, just off the specs that I read.
don't know, y'all. I think we just give this a try. I guess if you go to exactly where the axles are, there's a decent amount of weight there. Obviously, the engine again, the loader's the heaviest part. We could probably scooch it back a little bit, but I'd rather have more tongue weight than less. Definitely don't want to go with no tongue weight in the truck and trailer, get all kinds of wild down the road. Now we got to chain this thing down. And unlike, you know, skid steers and all that, I don't see a whole lot of really good chain down points on these things. We've got her all chained down. I just went kind of looped around the axles there it was the most solid point that I could find. The only thing I don't like is it kind of rubs up on the tire, but to get a further back pick point, you're really just putting a lot of pressure on the ramps. And because I'd rather know than not know, we're not super scientific and exact here, but we are sitting at just like 11 foot three, 11 foot four. Definitely not as tall as I thought it was gonna be. Good news guys, seems like we loaded this thing properly, was not sketchy at all, and the whole 6-0 just earning her key. We're gonna sneak up on Sergio. Sergio! Oh good, you're gonna need all the energy. We got a big, big project for you. What are we eating? What'd you get me? I won't stop eating. Okay, yeah, yeah, I gotta keep eating, eating, what, dang. Oh, we, we eating heavy today. Yeah. <laughs> That's my breakfast and lunch too. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's not very healthy, Sergio. I know, but I have to do stuff quick sometimes. So. That's true. What are we watching? Uh, D Max Rhino? No. Ford surrenders to Tesla. Okay, okay. A little controversy. I like it. I like it. Sergio likes the dramas, the telenovelas. Yeah, drama. <laughs> the technology drama. Sergio, eat, eat, eat. No, no, no. You eat. You eat. Sure. Yeah, I'll go unload. You eat. I'm not sure how sketchy this is gonna be unloading. You know, we got all the weight in the front, so shouldn't want to tip backwards off the trailer, but who knows. What? Is that good for me? Yeah. Right here? Yep. I need a forklift, but not that big, right? Hey, this will work though. Oh, and of course the alley's just getting more and more crowded. We got a tow truck pulling up right behind us. Oh, is it gonna get out of the way? Alright, I think we're good. Here goes nothing. Not too bad. A little hard to do with the GoPro in my hand. So I gotta make sure I pick up the forks as we come off the end of the trailer so those don't dig in. You see what we've got to work with, right? <laughs> it's not good. No. We only have two spots for lights. That's the only two spots in here? Well, I mean like on the back. Okay. Not acceptable. All right, all right. Now we do have this sweet little, I don't know what this mounting system's for down here. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. So we got these. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll make a light bar that goes across right here, but this window opens. So I might unbolt those We'll build a bracket that comes out and goes all the way across and bolts back in. We'll use those mounting points and then we can like infinitely light off of that. And in the front, Sergio, we're probably gonna end up having to do the same thing. We'll use those two lights as mounting points. And yes. Build a bar that goes across and then, yeah. We need side lights, we need front lights, we need all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Cameras is what you need. <laughs> those show up today. So, first question, we're a tow bolt system, right? I believe so, yep. Everything's really easy to get to. We have a headliner? Yeah, oh yeah. It's fancy. It's very nice. Should we put strobe lights? Always, yeah. Okay, always, always strobe lights. All right, we're, uh, Sergio's putting a game plan together on his uh, wiring. It looks really easy, right? Yeah, it looks easy. Looks easy, always easy. I bring you easy job. Hey, a battery right there in the front. Like, what more do you want? It doesn't get any easier than that. On the side, it's easy. Oh, okay. Looking at this setup, there's not a lot of really good mounting holes on the front. We don't have like a big exposed frame because they've got this whole molded front piece here um, that's attached to the roof. It's actually really nice. I mean, they made it look really good, but that limits my mounting options. So what I'm thinking, now that I'm looking at this, we might be able to actually go into here, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these lights. We're gonna use the lights mounting location to build some standoffs and then we'll do a bar all the way across the front, similar to how I did on my excavator. And from there, we can attach as many lights and accessories as we want. And then on the rear, we'll probably end up doing the same thing. Now, the only bad thing is it looks like these are screwed on from the back. I'm assuming if we pull these two bolts out, it'll take this whole gray piece off, and then we can get to the nut that I'm assuming is on the back side of this. Um, oh, and there's another bolt down there. Okay. Hopefully, this thing's strong enough to hold it. 
we might just end up going down here, but then we interfere with our window washer nozzle. I'm really starting to rethink my plan, guys. I hate uh, like the LED light bars, right? Like the big ones that everybody had on their truck in high school. I think because everybody had them on their truck in high school, I just don't like them anymore. However, maybe that's the solution for this. I don't know, we gotta see what Sergio has over there. Uh, you'll probably notice though, I changed shirts, check this out. We're just launching these. I just got my first one back. These sick new Work For shirts, these turned out absolutely killer and they are on the website now, workfortapparel.com. There is always a link down in the description of these videos to get you some sick shirts, decals, or jerky, whatever you want, we've got it all, workfortapparel.com. But for now, let's go over to Sergio's and let's just go see, see if he's got anything over there for us to work with. If I planned better, I would order things, but we all know, I don't, I don't really plan things. We'll come over to Sergio's display wall and here is pretty much all of our options. Now, I believe on the Mini X, we did something similar to this. I liked the round look because it looked more like Baja pre-runner style truck. And since we were building a light bar with a bunch of round ones, I thought it would look cool. On uh, this tractor, I don't really care as much. I thought about doing something like this, but I don't think it's as important. And I think if we go smaller, we can actually, we actually might be able to hang them upside down, which will make sense when I go back to the tractor. But uh, our options are pretty much in this world, um, which would probably be this guy right here, which is very bright. And then, or we go a little bit smaller, but probably similar brightness. Let's see, we've got 3,300 lumens. This guy is, this one right here is 3,270. This one's 28. But again, lumens kinda mean something. Like this one looks brighter, even though it's technically, what is that, 470 lumens less. Usually what manufacturers do when they measure lumens is they'll take like what the lumen output is of one of the LEDs that's in there and they multiply it times however many LEDs. It's not really a real world number unless they're actually doing real world testing, which I believe this world, Diodynamics, I believe they actually do real world testing on their stuff. However, like this light is pretty expensive, $220 per light for this bad boy. Oh, well, this one's got, look at that. Ooh, this one's got all kinds of functions. It's kind of cool. How do I turn it on though? Oh, 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 jeez. All right, well, I turned that on. Uh, is there a switch down here? I, all right, I give up. <laughs> all I know is how to turn on the backlight. Oh, 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 there we go. We just gotta push down on the switch. Woo, so that booger is bright. But at $220, and we would probably need like five or six of those across the front, let alone whatever we're doing in the back, $42, oh. $42.50, uh, this one doesn't have a price, but probably the same thing. Sergio, what? what's the biggest one of these you got? 52 inches. Here? Yes. Oh, 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 oh okay. Oh. Sergio, I might be convinced this time just to go light bar in the front. <laughs> Let's make our life easy, one wire. Well, two wires. <laughs> I still cannot see though from staring at all those lights. <laughs> 22, 52. No, 42 is a big one. Oh, come on. Let's go see what it looks like. Sergio, this might be the most expensive light I've ever taken out of here. All right. I normally go for like whatever the cheapest stuff you have is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because they work. You don't gotta go crazy expensive with LEDs. Nowadays, LEDs have kind of caught up to where there is an affordable market for LEDs. There's a very, very high end, and then there's still like the really cheap lenses that are gonna turn yellow within like, you know, six months, inside. get moisture inside and all that. But there is a middle ground nowadays, which is good for all of us because there's affordable LEDs out there. However, the dynamic stuff, not, it's not the cheapest. But if this makes our life easier versus buying, you know, six lights for the front, we just buy one light bar and then, I guess the windshield was bigger in my head. Yeah, maybe. All right. But there's That's, nothing you cannot build. Yeah, you can make it worse. Thanks, Sergio. That's the confidence I need. That might be the perfect size, Sergio. Let me hop up here. Here you go. Hop up on that tire. Dude, Sergio, this might be the perfect size. Yeah, I told you. Right there, boom. Boom, there you go. Sergio, it was meant to be, buddy. Still had to make up right now. Well, yeah, we still, I mean, what else is new? Now, trust me, guys, I don't think this is as cool as if we were to do it another way, but I think it's gonna work. I mean, it's almost the perfect width for the windshield. I'll just have to build some little brackets to come off of the cab, and we'll be able to tuck it up really high up underneath where the roof cap comes off. Then we'll replace those two ones up there with just a smaller cube on each side, but we'll mount the brackets instead of to where we can adjust them up and down. We'll put it sideways so we can shine it out off to the sides because when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you want to be able to see all the way around you. Otherwise, like it's really easy to get lost on my property. I know it doesn't seem like that, but it actually really is. The back, we're going to have to figure something out though. Maybe if we get something smaller, we can go up underneath on that bracket and then again, replace those two top ones. I don't know. Like we just totally, completely changed the game plan at this point now. 
Uh, we could probably use these two side brackets to shine off side lights as well. And then for the camera, I was gonna mount the camera way up there. However, there's a perfect bracket and mounting location here to, I think, shine down on the implement. Not 100% sure. Uh, the cameras are all supposed to show up today, so we'll start to kind of figure that out. I think we're gonna do all the lighting first. Camera second, I'm not sure how the series of videos is gonna play out. What's on, hold on. Maybe if, uh... There we go. There go. Oh, jeez, Sergio. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's with all the lights on in this place. Hold on, let's just shut the lights off. I mean, obviously, we got a giant skylight, so it's not gonna do much, but. Hey, Sergio, I think that's bright enough, buddy. We're gonna hey. burn a hole through that wall over there. Oh, cool. Sergio wants you to mount it on the roof, but I don't think that's cool. We gotta uh, go for it. I mean, it looks <laughs> cool. It does. I like it. All right, sold, Sergio. Hey. What's the price of a 42 inch <laughs> Yeah, what's the price of a 42 inch dial dynamic these days? <laughs> oh, man, if he's gotta go to the phone, that means it's expensive. Retail, Sergio, because we know I get it like 95% off, you know, but, but retail for the video. No, no, it's 98% off. Oh, 98? Okay, I'll take that. Oh, I'm punching it with my code DMAX right now. <laughs> Give me the extra discount. I can't see, I'm blinded. Five, six, $560. I told you. <laughs> I mean, by the time I'd buy six lights to go across there at, you know, 50 bucks yeah, a piece. Bucks. Was that 300 bucks? Mm -hmm. And this is probably brighter. All right, I'm going to sneak a... 18 inch off Sergio shelf here. Woo! Woo! Oh, it's gonna be an expensive lighting setup. Probably gonna be the perfect size. We have to fit right in between the hinges if we go underneath right there, which I think is gonna be the ideal location here. Again, I don't really wanna mess with trying to mount to those fiberglass roof. I think it's just gonna be a problem and it's not worth it. I don't know if we're still gonna be able to open the window though. Because if we can't, that really defeats the purpose. I got a little smarter and got a step stool. Oh, eh. I don't know guys, we might run into a little bit of issues, we'd have to get it, we'd have to get it really tight up in there, and even then, the window might still hit. Let's light this one up, let's see how bright this booger is. The window's holding it perfectly in place. Get a little pigtail, turn it on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think that's gonna work. I think we can combo off the back with a few other lights as well. We don't need a ton out back. Uh, however, now that I'm like seeing this setup, I could probably go mowing or at least continue mowing at night if I started in the daytime and actually have real lights on this thing. We're gonna have the neighbors. The neighbors are gonna see the drug deal entrance and then they're gonna see me out mowing at like 2 a.m. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, definitely. Definitely some drugs going on there. Even though I'm Rhino the anti-drug, I don't do drugs. Now, Sergio is done for the day over at his shop and I just grabbed a kind of a last minute bunch of stuff here to keep me somewhat going. He has like the nut cert tool and all that stuff that we're really gonna need when we dive into this. So I kind of need his shop to be open so I can borrow a bunch of his tools. Now that I'm like not really building an entire light bar setup for this, I'm gonna rely more on some of his tools. So we've got these smaller LEDs, which will probably go up there. We gotta see how they fit and replace the factory lights. And then thinking, either attached to that bracket there and we point out sideways that we have lights on both sides. It's either gonna be these or we've got these smaller boogers if we wanna go for a more low profile look. Obviously my little slow moving vehicle sign is kinda of in the way, but we can do something like this that's smaller and more low pro. I don't really know if it needs to be smaller for the sides, but Either way, that's an option to go streamlined. These things are pretty cool. They can really go anywhere that we want. If we want lights right there, we can mount them right there. Where's the wiring for this go? Oh, it pops right into the cab right there. Dang, maybe we just do that. This lighting feel is gonna get very expensive. Those just fit too perfectly right there. I think we're gonna have to end up doing something like that. This thing's gonna look like, I've seen some combines that get lit up really crazy because obviously, you know, farmers, when they're harvesting, they work almost 24 seven. Like sun up to sundown, dark, whatever. And I've seen some pretty gnarly combine light setups where it looks like a spaceship out in the field. It's kind of what I want for this. What you think, buddy? What you think? There's more room in here than in the truck. So change of plans. <laughs> Zach's got a customer vehicle coming in. Hold on, first of all. Yeah, he's alive, guys, he's alive. <laughs> so Zach, you wanna tell him about that big falling out we had? Yeah, um, no, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I swear guys, if there's not a vehicle or a person in my videos, like they apparently just like are dead or don't exist or something, something must, happened. Something must have happened like, no, there's just no work. <laughs> <laughs> so all of my buddies, we like, we all have lives and jobs and we're busy. That's why you don't see Chris around a lot. He's got a bunch of like kitchen stuff that he's been doing, installs and all kinds of construction. Zach's been crazy busy. So if you don't see him in the videos, it's usually because they're busy. Yeah, starting a new job. Whoa, oh, do we, tell, we don't tell him about no, that yet. Yeah, about. secret, secret. Zach's starting a new job. Is this hooked to anything? Yeah, dude, that's how smooth that clutch is. Oh, oh, that, that big strong leg. Yeah, I'm used to this. You know? oh, okay. This is like half driving a right hand drive. <laughs> So because Zach has a customer's truck coming in, the old crew cab OBS that's been sitting here for a long time, Zach actually fixed it. The coolant hoses are all brand new, so everything's good on her. Oh, oh Zach's revving it up. <laughs> it's a race car. So we're gonna be pulling the crew cab OBS out because we don't have room to store the crew cab OBS, Zach's customer's truck, as well as the tractor in here. It was not great timing. I didn't know he was having a customer's truck down here. That's why I brought the tractor. So we actually had room in the shop for once. We're gonna load this up on my trailer and we'll haul this out of here tonight. We're gonna use Zach's truck to jumpstart because the batteries are D-E-D -E -D dead, dead, dead. Uh, according to Zach, even the no-co jump box will not fire this thing up. That's how shot these batteries are. It's the blind leading the blind when a Ford saves a Ford. We got that high idle going on Zach's truck. Come on, old girl. She still got it. You charging? Hey. Almost. almost. <laughs> when this oh, one, that, it went up, it went up. Yeah, when this one kicks on, it'll go to like 14.5. So like they're so dead that if, if you start it, pull the jumper cable, trickle back. Oh, they're that dead? Because it, it's sitting there cycling the glow plugs. So yeah. it cycles the glow plugs, shuts the truck off. Yeah, these batteries have been sitting for a very long time. They are shot truck needs some new batteries. When batteries go, they're, they're gone. There's... See, see the, the dome light flicker? Yeah. That's the glow plugs turning on and off. Now we're good. We can unplug it. I haven't driven this truck in ages. I forget when this thing even broke. It was quite a while ago. Let's see, I think we had just gotten the dump trailer maybe? I think that's when it broke down. We had just gotten the dump trailer and it started puking out uh, coolant. Yeah. 